morning children in the previous class we all learned about plant hormones isn't it today we are going to learn about one of the important characteristic feature of living organism that is reproduction okay you all know that the characteristics of living be living things isn't it mom living things can grow living things can respire living things need food and water living things can reproduce isn't it okay today we are going to learn about reproduction in plants you all know that uh, each and every organism have a particular lifespan or it can live for a particular period on earth isn't it so uh, no this reproduction this uh, it gives the uh, continuation of the species so reproduction is a process by which an organism produces own kind okay it ensures the continuity and survival of the species the time uh, required to reproduce also varies from organism to organism so what is reproduction reproduction is a process by which the organism produces of its own kind or n ones the organism produces n ones that is reproduction the time required or the uh, reproduce also varies from organism to organism isn't it there will be a great variation in the period of reproduction in yeast bacteria rats elephant human being etc in uh, sexual reproduction the off offspring are produced by the union of male and female gametes so in sexual reproduction the offspring or the hybrids or the young ones are produced by the union of or by the fusion of male and female gametes these gametes contain the genetic material or the genes present on the chromosome which transmit from parents to offspring or uh, these or these characters are transmitted from one generation to the next generation so what do you mean by reproduction reproduction is a process by which the organism produces own kind or uh, it produces its uh, the uh, it's hybrid okay there are three types of reproduction in plants one is vegetative reproduction the second one is asexual reproduction and the third one is sexual reproduction what are the methods of reproduction in plants vegetative asexual and sexual reproduction okay there are three types of reproduction in plants namely vegetative asexual and sexual reproduction first about the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction takes place by means of vegetative cells or the somatic or the new uh, young ones or the uh, or the daughter individuals are produced from the vegetative cells or from the somatic cells of the plant body new plants are formed from vegetative cells or somatic somatic in the sense body cells the vegetative part of the plant such as root stem leaf and buds get detached from or or broken from the parent body and grows into a daughter plant this vegetative reproduction only have the mitotic division there is no meiotic division in uh, this in this vegetative method of reproduction only mitotic division there is no gametic fusion gametic fusion in the sense there is no uh, the fusion of male and female gamete okay so there are this vegetative takes uh, reproduction takes place by means of root stem leaf or bud for example in bryophyllum leaves in bryophyllum the margin of the leaf produce the end plant the leaf margin or the notches of the leaves produce the end plant so uh, plants which are propagated by leaves example bryophyllum plants which are propagated by leaves example bryophyllum then next is plants which are propagated through stem when uh, the certain weak stem to plant for example strawberry the weak stems uh, the weak stem plants uh, the new of the urban uh, this uh, touch uh, this weak stem plant touches the ground and new of the advantageous branches and buds 
when the the connections to the parent plant is broken it can develop into a new plant so here the plants propagated through the stem so certain weak stem to plant the branches of the weak stem touches the soil and when it uh, it will produce the adventitious branches and buds when it uh, when the connection with the parent plant is broken it can develop into a new plant so plants propagated through stem example strawberry big stem uh, plant the uh, the stem big stem touches the ground and give off adventitious roots and buds uh, it, uh, it when the connections to the parent plant is broken it can develop into a new plant so for example uh, so plants propagated through stem uh, through stem example strawberry through stem example strawberry next plants propagated through roots the tuberous roots present in dahlia as well as sweet potato these plants can produce uh, produce the m1 through the roots okay the tuberous roots can be used for vegetative propagation example dahlia plant asparagus and and uh, sweet potato the roots are tuberous the swollen tuberous roots can develop into the m1 so root prop plants propagated through root example dahlia then sweet potato etc next plants propagated through bulbils plants propagated through bulbils some plants propagated through bulbils this in in some plants the flower bud modifies into globose bulb uh, these are called bulb bulbils or uh, bulbs when these falls on the suitable substratum or suitable soil it can develop into the young plant so plants propagated by bulbils in some plants the flower bud modifies into globose bulb these bulb, bulbs are called bulbils through bulbils the plants can propagate and it produces the young ones so vegetative reproduction in plants takes place by means of leaves stem root bulbils okay so but in this case there is no mitotic division there's there's no meiotic division only mitotic division and there is no gametic union okay so these are the methods of vegetative propagation in plants so vegetative propagation in the sense the plant uh, can uh, re reproduce the young ones by the vegetative cells or by the somatic cells somatic cells now next uh, about the fragmentation the uh, some, uh, some plants for example the filamentous algae filamentous algae namely spirogyra the spirogyra filamentous algae the plant body is a plant body is thallus it can be broken into certain segments each segment can develop into the young one so this plant body or the algal plant body that is broken into certain segments and each segment can develop into a in one so thus plant uh, th thus plants can propagate by prop uh, this fragmentation so breaking of filamentous algae into many fragments this is a filamentous algae having spiral chloroplast this filamentous algae is breaking into certain segments or divides into certain segments these segments are called fragments these are the fragments these fragments can develop into a new algae example spirogyra next is next method is fission in this time the parental cell this is the parental cell divides along it and divides into two and form two daughter cells the example amoeba Again, fission in this type in this type of propagation or in this type of reproduction, the parental parental cell divides into elongates and divides into two and form two daughter cell. Example, amoeba. Next about budding. Budding means the formation of buds. 
okay a bud uh, a bud arising from the uh, this is the parental yeast cell a bud arising uh, this is a bud a bud arising from the parental cell is responsible for the development of the young one a bud arising from the parent body example yeast next next method is regeneration the ability of last body parts of a last body parts of an organism some body parts last and the last parts of a body uh, last parts of a body can develop into the young one example planaria hydra okay so into this, the last parts of a body can develop into the young one so the body parts uh, the can develop into an into individual organism uh, and uh, example planaria and hydra these are the methods of editative propagation okay so filamentous algae this algae can uh, reproduce the uh, young filament with the uh, by fragmentation the filamentous algae the filament can be broken into segments each segment can develop into the young one then in amoeba the method of propagation is fission fission in amoeba the parental cell this is the parental cell it can be divided into two and form two dot cells this is called fission then uh, budding budding means with the help of buds these organism can produce the young ones for example yeast cell the surface of this plant parental cell a bud can develop this each uh, cross wall is formed between these two and the stain of buds also formed from the parental cell when it is detached from the parental one each buds can develop into a young one okay these are the methods of propagation next is asexual reproduction so what about vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction takes place by means of vegetative vegetative cells or from the somatic cells so vegetative reproduction takes place through the vegetative cells or by the somatic cells that is uh, the the sex organs are not involved in this method of reproduction next is asexual reproduction production of offspring or production of young ones by a single parent without the fusion of gametes okay what is what do, what do you mean by asexual reproduction production of an offspring or production of new one or young one by a single parent without the involvement of gametes without the involvement of male and female gametes that is asexual reproduction so in asexual reproduction also there is no gametic union there is no uh, male and fem uh, female gametic union it occurs by means of spore formation in rhizopus or in nuca the in nuca this uh, the plant body is called mycelium the fungus nuca the plant body is called what mycelium okay what is it called mycelium it will produce a spore bearing structure called sporangium mycelium the plant body of fungus is called mycelium rhizopus mycelium the plant body is called mycelium this uh, or it, it is made up of the filamentous structure called hyphae this hyphae we are a spore bearing structure called sporangium this sporangium encloses encloses spores what is it called spores the sporangium encloses spores so asexual reproduction takes place by means of spores uh, this in uh, filament uh, in certain fungi for example rhizopus or muca this for uh, the plant body is called the plant body is called the mycelium it is made up of filamentous structure called hyphae okay plant body is made up of a filamentous structure called hyphae this hyphae at the time of asexual reproduction this hyphae bear 
the sporangium or spore bearing structures called sporangium okay this uh, the, the sporangium encloses the spores uh, the spore bearing structure sporangium develops from the fungal hyphae next uh, the, the nucleus the here uh, the nucleus divides several times and uh, each uh, nucleus divides several times and cytoplasm is also there inside and uh, uh, a few small minute spores are developed these spores encloses the nucleus and cytoplasm cytoplasm and the uh, spores encloses the nucleus also when these sporangium uh, gets broken the all the when the wall get ruptured the sporangiospores are liberated out when it falls on the sweet of its substratum it can develop into the young one okay thus uh, the plants can reproduce through Uh, this uh, uh, through asexual reproduction next about the sexual reproduction in plants the process of sexual reproduction in the sense the process of gametic union okay so here there is no gametic union this vegetative and asexual there is no uh, gametic union only mitotic division takes place only mitotic division takes place here in sexual reproduction when two gametes male and female gametes fuse to produce the egg what you all know that uh, flower is the reproductive part of a plant is it which is the reproductive structure or which, which is the reproductive organ present in plant flower flower is the reproductive organ of a flowering plant you all uh, this, uh, so flower is a condensed modified shoot doesn't it ma flower is a condensed modified uh, modified shoot now this uh, uh, this you can you, have, you are going to learn the parts of a typical flower okay parts of a typical flower uh, this so flower is a reproductive organ sexual reproductive organ of a plant each uh, this each flower is having four floral parts isn't it ma'am uh, sir each flower is having a floor four floral parts this is calyx what is a calyx parts of a typical flower calyx then this one is this brightly colored parts that corolla what is a corolla this is corolla calyx and this is antrichium antrichium the third one is antrichium and the fourth one is uh, what is it now what or this this is gynecium okay antrichium gynecium these are the four floral parts name the four floral parts calyx calyx corolla this is antrichium and this one is gynecium so that so the first two calyx and corolla these are non essential parts of a flower because they do not take part directly in reproduction so these are non essential parts okay uh, this this uh, two parts do not take part directly in reproduction the calyx is made up of green colored sepals these sepals, these sepals Uh, protect the flower when it is bud. Okay, so calyx is made up of sepals. These uh, sepals protect the flower when it is bud. Corolla are made up of petals. Corolla are made up of brightly colored petals. So corolla are made up of these are the petals. Corolla are made up of petals. Then antrichium. It is made up of stamen. antrichium it is made up of stamen gynecium is made up of pistil or carpels gynecium is made up of pistils or carpels pistils are 
corpus. Okay. Then, so first to calyx and corolla are is non essential parts because they do not take part in take part directly in reproduction. But antrium and gynecium these are essential parts of a flower. They do take part directly in reproduction. So these two are the essential parts. Calyx is made up of sepals. Corolla are made up of petals. Antrium are made up of stamen. And gynecium is made up of Carpels. Okay. First about calyx. These calyxes are uh, green, uh, usually green in color. These calyx protect the flower when it is bud. Then corolla are brightly colored. These corolla attracts the insects for pollination. Then antrium. It is the it is uh, it's the main part of the flower. Which is the main part of the flower? Antrium. It is composed of stamen. Antrium is the main part of the flower composed of stamen. Each stamen is having a stalk that is called filament. And a bag like structure at the top that is called anther. Each stamen is having a filament and anther. If you take a stamen, you can see uh, the filament stalk of the stamen and a back leg structure at the tip that is called anther. Okay, so this anther encloses the pollen sac in, uh, or pollen grains. Pollen grains are there inside the pollen sac. This is the main part of the flower. This is the, this uh, antrium is the male part of the flower. Okay. Gynecium is the female part of the flower. It consists of uh, ovary, style and stigma. What is this? Ovary, style and stigma. These are the parts of gynecium. Gynecium is the Female part of the flower, it consists of, it consists of ovary, style and stigma. These are the parts of gynecium. Okay mom. So what are the parts of gynecium? Ovary, style, stigma. This is the female part of the flower. Gynecium is the female part of the flower. Each flower, uh, this, this gynecium consists of carpels or pistils. It encloses the egg. Listen, so now uh, you are going to learn the structure of pollen grain. Each pollen grain is having an out, uh, it consists of two layers, in two walls. Each pollen grain is having two walls, outer, outer egg sign. The pollen grain is having two layered wall, outer egg sign. What is that? Outer egg sign and inner thin intent outer thick egg sign and inner thin intent so for each pollen grain consists of double layered wall outer thick egg sign and inner thin a thin in time the outer thick egg sign is provided with a pore called germ pore germ Pore. This egg sign is not a continuous one, interrupted by a pore called jumper. Intine is the thin inner layer which is made up of pectin and cellulose. It encloses two nucleus, one is vegetative nucleus and a generative nucleus. Vegetative nucleus and a generative nucleus okay this uh, uh, this uh, vegetative nucleus is large and generative nucleus is small this nucleus generative nucleus divides um, uh, divides and form two uh, main gametes okay this generative uh, this in the cell divides mitotically and produce two male gametes this is the structure of pollen grain so pollen grain is a male uh, the pollen grain is the male reproductive part of a flower. It consists of two or double layered wall. Outer wall is outer wall is egg sign. It is thick and inner it is provided with a pore called germ pore. Inner wall is thin. 
in time and it is made up of pectin and cellulose. This it encloses the uh, uh, nucleus, two nuclei that is a vegetative nuclei, vegetative nucle uh, nucleus and the generative nucleus or vegetative cell or generative cell. This generative cell, generative cell divides mitotic mitotically and produce two male gametes. This is the structure of your flower. Is that? So the structure of a flower, flower, flower is having flower, flower, four floral parts namely calyx, corolla and tissue and gynecium. Calyx is made up of sepals, corolla made up of petals, antrichium is made up of stamen, antrichium is the male part of the flower, gynecium is made up of carpels or pistils, made up of, or it's a female reproductive part of a flower. This gynecium consists of three parts, namely ovary, style, stigma. Okay, so this, uh, this ovary encloses the female reproductive structure or uh, it encloses the egg. Okay, ma? This the structure of, uh, what about antrichium? It's the male reproductive part of a flower. It encloses, it, uh, this, uh, it, it consists of, of filament and uh, and the anther encloses the pollen sac inside within the pollen sac pollen grains are present this is the structure of pollen grain pollen grain is so the it is enclosed it is covered by double wall outer egg sign which is thick and it is provided with a pore called germ pore and the inner thin intine it is made up of Pectin and cellulose, which encloses the cytoplasm and two larger nuclei. Vegetative, cell, uh, vegetative nucleus is larger and generative nucleus is smaller. This generative cell divides mitotically and produces two male gametes. This is the structure of a flower. Okay, children, now we turn the page. Turn page to uh, 50. Six, two fifty-six. Two. Uh, write, uh, this, write the answer for choose the correct answer. The plant which propagates with the help of its leaves. That is bryophyllum. Second one, asexual reproduction takes place through budding in yeast. Third one, syngamy. That means the fusion of male and female. Okay, syngamy results in the formation of zygote. Then fourth one, the essential parts of a flower are antrichium and Gynetium, antrichium and gynetium. These five of uh, choose the correct answer. You uh, must uh, learn and write in the notebook. And also one more detailed answer. Page number 245. Write down the question. Describe the parts of a typical flower. Describe the parts of a typical flower. From the first paragraph. Uh, uh, from here you marry a flower is a modified shoot with limited growth. From there to uh, the ovary contains the ovules. Turn next page up to the to market. The ovary contains the ovules. Okay. Then so today's work you have to uh, write this answer and draw these diagrams in the notebook. As well as uh, the five one word answer also you must write it in the notebook. In the previous chapter you did not mark a few question answers that... Uh, you mark it now, page 240, page 240, uh, first and second you mark, marked already, then third one, that also you marked, uh, the long answer, uh, second one, describe an experiment, Roman number 8, page number 241, Roman number 8, second question, describe an experiment which demonstrates the growth, stimulating hormone is produced at the tip of the coleoptile. It is, uh, it is in page number 230. Page number 230. The experiment. Went experiment you mark it. Fully you mark it. Oxen means to grow. Okay. We can continue in the next class. Thank you children.